I'm Jamie Rennick, also known as Jakob or Spitz was the artist name. I was born in uh, Cardiff, Wales. Um, brought up there until I was around eight years old and then moved to London. Um, I have one sister and one brother. We moved to London because of the family business. In, in that time it was one of the recessions of the Tory government. Um, when I moved to London, I went to a primary school in London called Grange Primary School in South Ely. And uh, this is where I, you know, befriended many of my young friends who were from different backgrounds. And this was my experience of London. I became very f familiar and friendly with people from different ethnic origins. I then went to Acton High School, which is obviously a similar part of London. And I had many, even including Muslim friends, but I didn't learn much about Islam at this time. When I was young in Wales, we would go to Sunday school and my family, although they say they're Christian, it was quite lax Christian, like a lot of people in this country are lax Christian. But I, I remember singing these songs when I was a young child in Wales and thinking about the power of God. I remember a particular song about the, he's got the whole world in his hand and I remember feeling quite awful of God, not awful, but awesome, the awesomeness of God. Or, or struck is the right word for it. Um, and my, my family, generally speaking, it depends on which side of the family. In the extended family, they were quite religious people. But my immediate family, they weren't so you know, dogmatic in their religion. Um, although I do remember they, they, both of my mum and my dad had quite a, uh, a sense of Christianity. The first contact I had with Islam, I suppose, was in high school. And I remember thinking of it as being pretty strict because a friend of mine would have to, you know, observe different religious observances. And he didn't really explain it in a way that I think was very um, uh, endearing. And so I felt that it was quite a strict and peculiar religion. And in fact, one of the things that he said to me is that he was going to pray now. And when he said, I said, well, you could pray here. And he said, no, I have to pray on the floor and bow down. And I said, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? And I suppose it's, uh, I, uh, it shows the, the Western understanding of something like that being extreme, where they think that even bowing down, prostrating to God is being something extreme in this time. Yet in a lot of ways they bow down to consumerism in this time in an even greater way, and even more hum humbly than a lot of the Muslims pray to God. Islam came into my life when particularly I was going through quite a tough period and I started to try and read the Bible and one particular night I was literally fighting for control of my body and I was getting evil thoughts telling me to harm my family etc etc and so I tried to read the Bible and when I read the Bible I felt that it didn't offer me any comfort or it didn't take away this burden, this feeling. So I remembered thinking I need a more authentic text. Now. A few years before, I'd been on a, a table where they were giving out Qurans. And I'd taken a Quran, and the Muslim made more sense than the Christian who was arguing with him. But I never read the Quran, I just kept it in a high place. I didn't investigate further, although it made sense, it was logical, it, it completely, you know, if you asked me right then, did I believe it was more logical than Christianity, I would have answered yes. But then, basically, I'd moved home. So going back to the story, I'd moved home, so I tried to read the Bible uh, this particular night. I'd moved home, so I didn't know if I had the Quran. And then one of the things that I'd learned from high school is that the Quran was the unchanged word of God. And so as I was going to the only place it could be, desperate for the Quran to be there, I remembered that the Quran was the unchanged word of God. And as soon as I opened the cupboard, I believed this to be the case, so as soon as I opened the cupboard and touched the book, a feeling of peace came over me like I'd never had in my life. And I started to read the Quran, and I realized it's just from the same God as the God of the Bible. So this was something that really struck me and I was, like, I was quite upset with my Muslim friends in, in a lot of ways because I was like, how comes you never told me that it come from the same God? This is the same thing. They, it would always been portrayed as a foreign religion, a foreign faith for someone else. Whereas it was a continuation of the message of the Bible. And it was a clarification of the message of the Bible going on and further reading of the Qur'an clarified the oneness of God, 
which in the Bible had been confusing because it, it talked as God as being three, although being one, etc., etc. And the, the Quran really clarified this and was overpowering and overwhelming with its oneness of God. When I first thought about becoming Muslim, it happened in a gradual process because for a lot of people what happened on that particular night would have been enough for them to say, that's it, I'm Muslim. But I just decided that was it, I had to read the Quran. And I, that summer I read the whole of the Quran through, and I would even try and fast, even though I didn't know how to fast. I would drink water, which is not the proper way of fasting. Now, I basically in this period of time, I, initially I would have said that the, the, word of, the Quran was the word of God, but some of my Christian doctrine was still with me. So about halfway through, I pr probably said my shahada on my own, my declaration of faith. But I decided that I was going to become a Muslim well into the Quran, because the Quran was the thing that really convinced me. I, initially, I, you know, I just had an experience. But the Quran convinced me, argument after argument, question after question I would have, would be answered by the Quran. And they still are today. And so, basically, when I went back to university, that's when I formally took my shahada, when I formally became Muslim. There was definitely a change in attitude towards, towards me from my family and from my friends. And some of my friends from before I no longer really speak to. It just happened as a gradual process of filtering out because of different lifestyles. It wasn't even a dramatic shift, but so much as a gradual phasing of, of you know, phasing out of who was important to me now, but who shared my values. Um, but initially, my family didn't really treat me much differently than they had before, especially after the initial shock. Of course, in the beginning, it was quite a shock for my family, but yet again, like I said before, it was a gradual process. And so, because it happened over a summer and over some time, they were able to get used to it, and I was able to, you know, get back in some sort of family uh, I don't know quite how to describe it. It's some orderly fashion with my family. It wasn't like, a, like other people have experienced. I'm quite grateful for it, the fact that my family were around me at the time and I still have a good relationship with my family to this day. Uh, my brother is a Western male from Britain, right? What do you think happens to a Western male from Britain? He watches uh, softcore pornography, listens to hardcore hip hop, um, dresses very street, talks very street and interested in women. That was my brother and that was my role model as a kid. So I pick up all of these things and as I'm, become, as I'm reaching that age of adolescence, Jamie then starts to have a reaction against all of these things and oppose each and every one of these things, which is very interesting. So that kind of shift in who, well, no, he was still my role model in many ways, but for me to be going through these basic adolescent experiences with Jamie being highly moralistic about it, it was a very funny experience. Um, and there's uh, inconsistencies and there's uh, arguments and there's debates that have been had all the way, but it's meant that I've had a very reflective uh, developmental process myself. And uh, Jamie has always wanted me to learn from the lessons that he lived. Um, as opposed to me living through them myself. He wants me to learn from his mistakes in many ways. Which is, he's been a very supportive older brother in that respect. Jamie started to play about with the ideas, had experiences with what he called the unseen, and from there developed a particular way of viewing the world that was very much in accordance with Islam, but it was a gradual process. So. Um, Jamie would adopt certain parts of the Dean and put it into practice and put it into his poetry um, and discuss these kind of concepts. But it was a very slow process for Jamie to become the full-fledged Muslim that he is today, practicing in the way that he is. It was a, I mean, it's a major life change. So um, in order to go through that process, it was obviously gradual. A radical change would probably not have yielded what's happened with Jamie now. I was uh, 12 or 13 when 9-11 happened, right? My political consciousness has been defined by that event and the wars that have been fought since then. And the imperial wars that have been fought since then on the basis of dehumanizing the Islamic population of this world. And that was just colonialism done through euphemism and it was never an issue with Islam in itself. And that was all uh, smoke and mirrors because as Libya has shown, 
um, we have no problem supporting Islamists when they're uh, supportive of our foreign policy. So um, anyone who know, who's connected to history knows the Western game and the short-termism in the way that they view Islam. In terms of my feelings towards Islam, um, I think it's a very positive thing in many respects. I have very close friends who are Muslim and I have very close friends who are secular but were brought up in a Muslim background. And I think the general scheme of morality that it gives you is uh, very important. In terms of my fears, um, I suppose my greatest fear is that, I mean, Jamie grapples with the unseen. That's what Jamie does. That's what brought Jamie to Islam more than anything else. And it's where that rabbit hole leads um, because you have to live in this world irrespective of the, whether there's the next world or not, whether there's gin, whether there's manipulation, whether whatever there is, you still have to pay those bills, you still have to get that job, you still have to maintain those friendships, you still have to do that routine stuff. And um, my only real fear is that Jamie's going to have uh, blockades to that through the uh, doctrine of Islam that he's adopted. And it's just a constant dialogue and a reflection upon that that I think is necessary that I'll, I'm always there to provide and that will always be a conversation. So I don't think there's any real issue in terms of my fear of what the state will do to my brother. Um, he's white. <laughs> they don't do it to white people generally. <laughs> um, it's completely, you have to be bearded and Muslim and Arab. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole combo that you're going to have to go through to get the Guantanamo Bay treatment. Jamie's white, he generally won't. I don't think we I have too much to worry about in that respect. There was definitely a change in attitude towards, towards me from my family and from my friends. And some of my friends from before I no longer really speak to. It just happened as a gradual process of filtering out because the, the, the different lifestyles. It wasn't even a dramatic shift but as so much as a gradual phasing of, of you know phasing out of who was important to me now but who shared my values um, but initially my family didn't really treat me much differently than they had before especially after the initial shock of, of course in the beginning it was quite a shock for my family but yet, yet again like I said before it was a gradual process and so, because it happened over a summer and over some time, they were able to get used to it. And I was able to, you know, get back in some sort of family, uh, I don't know quite how to describe it, it some orderly fashion with my family. It wasn't like, a, like other people have experienced, I'm quite grateful for it, the fact that my family were around me at the time and I still have a good relationship with my family to this day. So this is my room, this is where I uh, live. This is also the room where I first picked up the Quran from this cupboard over here. And then this is where I, you know, relax and read and watch documentaries online. Alhamdulillah. Hi Dad. Hi Jamie, you off? Not yet, not quite yet. We're gonna shoot off soon. This is my dad. Oh, li we live together at the boat, and uh, he's been very uh, accommodating towards my changes. So. so, how did you find it when I first became Muslim? Um, well, you were struggling at the time, and I remember that you looked at a number of possible faiths, you met a Methodist minister and you looked at Islam and um, I thought that, well I was concerned initially I thought that as time's gone by and we're talking about quite a long while now I realised that it's a fundamental part of your life. Do you think it's had an impact on the family in a big way? Or? Well, I've often said to people, um, because I come from a Christian background myself, that if you'd become an evangelical Christian, uh, it would have had a similar effect on the, on the family or, or 
if someone becomes um, zealous about their faith, it clearly it has a, a, a knock-on effect on the family. How do you mean it, 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 it's difficult to know whether you mean there's been a negative effect on the family or a positive effect no, on the family? Just a general effect. Uh, I think we, we've all come to respect uh, the position that you that you've taken. Um, sometimes we realise it isn't easy for you that there are habits like smoking and drinking, and there are TV programmes that you might feel very uncomfortable with. But you know we've managed to sort of work all that out, and I don't consider there are any issues that are, are, are difficult at all. So, uh, what changes have you noticed? Well, well, we are talking about a long period of time, so there have been, I suppose, gradual changes that you've... Your appearance is different. Um, you wear uh, a, a full beard, and or you've grown a full beard, and you wear Islamic clothes. Um, but you're still the same old Jamie inside, so, you, you know, it's... People's appearances does do change, like my hair's gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah. And are you happy with the changes? It's a difficult one, isn't it, really? Um, if you mean by happy, do am I comfortable that you've chosen a faith that, that you get solace from and, and enjoyment from and enlightenment from? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for that. No, I would like to thank you for the support you've given me, and I know sometimes I've been hard, but I would like to thank you for that. Well, I don't think you've been hard, and I think you just couldn't, it just seems inappropriate to say thank no, you. No, no, but you've been a good dad to me, so I'd like to thank you for that. Well, you got, haven't got many people to compare me to. <laughs> <laughs> Like human. No, <laughs> honestly, just accept it, you know. <laughs> just accept it, don't you? No, no, just get the wood chopped, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't come back, I'll chop the wood. Didn't okay, it? or it's going to be cold tonight. We're on our way to Chiswick Mosque for the Doha prayer, which is the second prayer of the day after the, the you know, the pre-dawn prayer. And sometimes I lead the prayer there, or sometimes I lead the call to prayer there, which is called the Muaddin. It's a very small mosque, but I, you know it's very cosy, and I can spend some time with my friends there. And um, you know, I go five times a day if I can. Sometimes I'm not so strong, so I don't make it all the time. But obviously, if I'm at work, then I don't make it five times a day. I pray where I am, but the, a man should, as much as he can, pray in the mosque, in the Jama'ah which is the congregation. When I was so awestruck by Islam and by Allah, by the Quran, I found the truth. And when you find something so precious, you're willing to do anything for it. You're willing to sacrifice your life and change your whole lifestyle for it because you found light, because you found something so powerful. And I found that. And so for me, I was willing to change my whole way of life. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that Islam is powerful, so enter it gently, for otherwise it will destroy you. Now, no one told me this in the beginning. And I became, you know, I became to the point where I, I almost not burnt out, but I ended up relapsing in some ways. And it took me some time so that I would start praying and, and fasting, etc. But I started fasting straight away. Fasting I found very easy. But why I made these changes is because the one who created me knows what's good for me. And I found in my, in my experience that something like praying is something now I enjoy doing. Something like fasting is something I look forward to and I like to do extra because I want to get closer to God because that's what this life is about. That's where you'll achieve felicity. That's where you'll achieve the real light, the real positive changes that you'll find is in worship of God. 
This is where you'll find light. You won't find it at the bottom of a pipe or the bottom of a bottle. You might find a laugh, but in the morning you'll have a headache. Whereas with this, you'll wake up with a clean, clean head, thinking clearly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Takbir! That's it, that's it. Alright, the next one is called Still Restless. I started off as a DJ when I was in high school. Um, I used to buy garage records and all this sort of stuff and I started writing you know uh, poetry and rap at that young age when I was about 14 15 I didn't write much I was more of a DJ at that point but as I grew older I started knowing some MCs and I wanted to write and put my view across and this also coincided with my journey to Islam so I would write a lot about the issues that we face, political issues, secularization of society, and this was before I was Muslim. When I became Muslim, I carried on doing music, although I knew that it was a controversial subject. And I used to perform in clubs, and I, even, even when I was first in the first stages of becoming Muslim, um, this is what I would do. And gradually my material became more Islamic, because in terms of the poetry, um, and I even ended up performing at Trafalgar Square and other events. Here we go, Bismillah. We all know what the roads are like, sick of the stereotypes, want the type of stereo that keeps the movement alive. Some survive by living off the street, and trust is dark, dirty, and bleak, and darker. When kids with no mum or father forced into selling the bodies, the body protects the wife, project on behalf of restless beings, and petition to realize dreams, because this lies, you know what it seems. But I decided to stop this. Um, I decided to stop performing first because I felt that I had a, it was a I'd had a particular dream and in this dream I saw that I wanted applause and I wanted, uh, I was craving for recognition. And when Allah is the only one who's worthy of applause and praise in that way, we don't clap to Allah, we bow our heads to Him. But this was a, a, a realization for me that I needed to stop performing. I will perform again and I have performed again since. Uh, inshallah, I will do it again soon, but as a poet and not using musical instruments. I stopped using musical instruments because the vast majority of scholars say it's not permissible and I don't want to be in a doubtful area with regards to what I do. Plus, the, the naked spoken word is a lot more powerful than something with music. People can listen to every word you say. The difference that Islam has made to my life is like the darkness to the light, like the, like, like the difference between death and life. Before I was sleepwalking and now I feel awake. This is the difference that I feel it's made in many ways because for instance the feeling that I get in my prayer when I'm attentive is something that's priceless that I never experienced a high like it and I tried many things in my past. So for me the, the difference is between the, the darkness and the light. This is the difference that I, it's made to me. And it's a continuing difference. And the more I become aware, and the more of Islam that I study in, and that comes to light and I'm educated about, the more light I see. Islam is light, but if we have the right attitude towards it.